Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to make 3D text effects inside of Photoshop without using the 3D filter. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this right here is what we're gonna be making today. I'm gonna to go ahead and open up a new document. So I'm gonna come up here, File, New, and I'm using these settings, 1920 by 1080, a resolution of 72, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. Now I'm gonna come over here to the text tool and choose that, just click somewhere on the canvas, and I'm gonna type out the word love. Okay, I'm gonna press the letter V on the keyboard and I'm gonna bring this uh, close, close to the center. I'm gonna come over here to my character panel. Uh, you can get to there also from here, Windows character. And when this is open, we're using a font called Lust Script. The size here is gonna be 300 pixels and letting doesn't really matter because we only have one line of text here. Uh, this, however, is gonna be zero, so we'll move that back down to zero. The color we're using for this, by the way, is uh, BF3737. Now we're gonna create it in this color and then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to change gradients and add patterns and do all of those types of things to this. To begin with, we'll start with this color and then we'll just move forward from there. So once you have your text set up, we can come over here to the layers panel. We're gonna be working with this text layer and I'm just gonna right click and open up blending options just to bring up my layer styles. I'm gonna add a gradient. So this is the gradient that I'm gonna use. It's just a, a blue to pink gradient. And the colors here are 07A4AE for the blue and for the pink we're using E62490. That's going to be the hex code down here. So I'm going to click OK. I have this set to 135 degrees but how you set this up is really just going to be up to you and what you want it to look like. You can use any gradient for this. I'm just going to add it here so that uh, we can turn it on and off later on and click OK. Now I'm going to come back in here, right click, open the blending options, but I'm going to turn on the pattern layer. So I'm going to use this pattern. This is a pattern that, that we created in another video uh, and I'll go ahead and link to that as well. But any pattern will work for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that and I'm gonna click OK. When I did that, I have I still have that gradient overlay here and I have the pattern, which means that I can turn this one on or I can turn that one on or I can just turn off all of the effects and just have the color there. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave these both off, but I want the options for later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as it is. Now what I'm doing here, the reason that I added these here is because I'm gonna turn this into a smart object and then I'm gonna be duplicating that smart object many times over. So uh, when I add the gradient here, it's also gonna add it to every other layer. When I turn on the pattern, it's gonna turn on the pattern for every other layer. Hopefully that makes sense, but uh, I'll give you a little demonstration here in a minute. So I'm gonna right click, choose convert to smart object now that uh, you have this little icon here, this text layer is a smart object and you can tell that the effects are gone. So if we wanted to edit those effects, we'd actually have to double click, open it up in a PSB file and edit all of that stuff from there. Now what I'm gonna do, now this is a smart object. We don't wanna do this before it's a smart object. We need to do it after. We're gonna right click and we're gonna open blending options again. This time we're just gonna add a bevel and emboss. The settings for this are gonna be inner bevel. We want our technique to be smooth. Our depth is 100, direction up, size six pixels. The angle for this is 120. Our altitude is 30 degrees. Gloss contour is uh, peaks. So that's gonna be this one right here. And our highlight mode is screen, basic white at 50% opacity, shadow mode multiply, basic black at 50% opacity. That's all we're gonna do. We're not adding any other layer styles. I'm gonna come up here to filter and I'm gonna go to blur and to Gaussian blur. 
So I do want to blur the edges of this just slightly. So I'm going to leave our radius here at 0.6 pixels and I'm going to click OK. Now it's important to note that once I start duplicating all of this, the bevel and emboss and the Gaussian blur are not going to change for every layer of the smart object. So you need to make sure that you have all of that set uh, correctly here and then we can start duplicating it. So we have everything that we're going to do. Again, the bevel and emboss, Gaussian blur are on the outside of the smart object. And then we added a gradient and we added a pattern to the inside of this smart object. All right, so the next steps, uh, we're going to be using the keyboard a lot for this one. There are specific steps that you're going to take. You're basically just going to be repeating these steps over and over again. You can't use a step and repeat for this because we're going to be moving the text in uh, different directions. So this is not something where you can use the step and repeat. We're just going to go ahead and do this all manually. One other thing before we start, make sure that these anchors are up before you start this next process that we're going to be working on. So just make sure that you press the letter V on the keyboard and that your anchors are up right here. So this text is selected and now we're just going to go to the keyboard and on the keyboard, we're going to do command and the letter J control and the letter J on a PC. Now we just made a copy of that layer and we're going to press the right arrow key one time. That's it. We're not going to do anything else with that layer. Command and J again. This time we're pressing the up arrow one time. That's it. Command J, right arrow. Command J, up arrow. You're going to do this about 20 times alternating between the left arrow and the up arrow between copying the layers. So command J is duplicating the layer and then we're just nudging the layer slightly to the left and up. Okay, right at this point we have 20 layers. So that's including the, the very first layer and then all the way up to 19. So we have 20 layers. What I'm going to do is grab this top one hold down the shift key on the keyboard, grab the very last one right here, command and the letter G, and that's going to create a grouping from this. So this is group one. Okay. I'm going to hold down the option key on a Mac or alt key on a PC, and I'm just going to drag this up. So I've just created a copy of group one. So that's group one copy. Um, and I'm just going to nudge this. I'm going to bring this over that way. Now you can see that I have a pretty definitive line right here. Let me zoom in so we can take a look. So I'm going to just kind of nudge these into place. Okay. And then I'm going to copy it one more time and we're going to create that same thing. Just nudge it with your arrow keys on your keyboard into place. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to create something that's editable that you can use over and over again. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to press command J one more time just to add that in. And I'm going to bring this up here to the top outside of these groups. So these groups are basically the 3D effect. This one right here is going to be where you would edit your text. So if you were uh, creating this for sale or for somebody else to use, what I usually do is I'll label my layers like this, just so that people know when they open up this file that they need to double click here. You can also right click here and then, I don't know, use a color to denote that this is where you edit. So anyway, for us, uh, we're going to go ahead and follow the directions here. I'm going to double click to open up my text smart object and I can change this text. So I'm going to press the letter T on my keyboard. That's going to bring up the text tool. I'm just going to change these to something else. I just want you to take a look at, at this just so that you can see how easy this is. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'm going to save it with these new settings. 
So you can see how it's changed the text. Everything else stays the same. And that's because this smart object, it, all of these right here are basically copies of this one smart object. Now, if I were to turn off all of these effects for this layer, I'm going to turn that off and you'll see that it didn't make the change for the rest of them. That's because we made these changes outside of the smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. I'm going to turn on all my effects. So I'll double click just to get back in here. Now you can uh, see we still have these uh, layer styles here. And when I turn that on, now we could have done this after the fact, meaning I could have added it now versus before. Um, it doesn't really matter because once I add this gradient, it's going to add it to all of the text layers. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, press save or close it. I'm sorry, and press save. And you can see that all of the layers underneath also have that gradient applied to them. Now, if I go back in, let's double click, turn that off and turn on this uh, pattern and then um, close that, make sure to save it. And you can see that that pattern has been applied everywhere as well. So I'm gonna double click again. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that, uh, the gradient turned on. And I wanted to show you how to edit this uh, when you have even longer text because, you know, four letters is fine, but you might have some really long text that you need to, that you want to create uh, something like this for, or not super long, but longer text. So what I'm going to do is come here to image and I'm going to change the canvas size here. So my uh, height is 356. I'll go ahead and leave that alone. I'm going to change this to 1400. So this is going to be super wide. Now I'm going to press the letter T on the keyboard and I'm going to change the lettering. Okay, so it's really important that all of the letters stay within this frame right here. Otherwise, so if I go too low or too high, like with this L, for example, the whole top of this will get cut off in the text effect. So you want to make sure that everything is inside of the bounds of this canvas. Um, just close this out, press save. Now if I had left the canvas smaller, let's double click and, and take a look at that. So if I had made this bigger, say, I don't know, right there, you can obviously tell that the L has been cut off there. I'm gonna go ahead and save that just so that you can see what happened there. This text area is not bound by this canvas. It's bound by the smart object canvas, which means that if that text went outside of the bounds of the smart object canvas, it's not going to show up here the way you would expect it to. So I just wanted to show you that quickly. I'm going to go back in here, bring, bring this back down to size here and just make sure that everything is inside the canvas. So again, if you need to change the size of the canvas or you have longer letters, you can come up here to image and change the canvas size, not the image size. If you like this video and want to see more text effects inside of Photoshop, make sure to check out the playlist up on the screen right now. And of course, like, share, and subscribe. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.